So this is part three of selling your handmade jewelry. First we did how to sell your first 10 pieces, then your first 100 pieces, and now in this video we're gonna go over how to sell your first 1,000 pieces. If you haven't seen the other two videos, pop on over and watch those ones if you want to beforehand, but if you're already at the stage where you're scaling to 1,000, let's dive right in. Make sure that you stick around to the end because I am going to one, announce the winner of the giveaway for the free one hour session with me where you get to ask me all your questions about your own jewelry business and also my very, very important tip number 10. So stick around for that. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. So point number one is identifying your target audience. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. I know I feel like I go on about it in all my videos, but it genuinely is super important because so much of your brand is built on that and the success of it relies on you having a really clear understanding of your target audience. So really spend some time doing that because with your first 10, for example, it's mainly friends and family, then your first 100, you're getting clarity on that, but at this point, you really really need to have a really strong understanding of that especially if you're going to want to move into paid ads later down the line so that is really really important and also I say this video is about your first 1000 but it can be thousands it can be even more it's just these are the next steps to take after your first 100 and point number two is to develop a clear brand identity this lies very much on top of identifying your target audience they kind of go hand in hand in my opinion because they can't really you can't really have one without the other so really having a strong brand identity having a clear voice a clear way of doing your marketing a clear aesthetic everything that really feels like a unified brand that is really really important in terms of building that customer loyalty making sure that people come back and they get what they're expecting when they come back so on your Instagram feed for example you don't want to be posting one certain style and then completely posting something completely and utterly different from one day to the next popping pictures of your meal in there nobody really wants to follow and sign up for that if they are not really sure what they're getting into so really make sure that you you as a as the owner have a really clear understanding of what that experience is for the person coming in to experience your brand Obviously this includes having your logo nice and clear, your colors, your branding, your website, your packaging and all of that, but underneath that also just the entire feel of your brand. I personally absolutely love this part. It brings me so much joy to really see someone's vision come to life. And in the Consistent Sales Academy, I love working on this part with the students and just seeing them light up when they actually really get a full grasp on this. So it's super exciting. And being able to watch the change on the Instagram feeds is they get that really nice and clear so that the person coming on there has a really good understanding as well that's really really beautiful to see and be a part of one really nice thing that I always get them to do is take a screenshot before we start working together and then a screenshot a couple of months down the line when they've really clarified that and it's really nice for them to be able to see as well because you might you might want to delete some photos or you know archive some things along the way just to kind of really crispen it up which leads me on to point number three, which is using social media strategies. Kind of already touched a little bit on it, but let's dive in a little bit deeper. It's such an incredibly great platform in terms of free advertising. Obviously you can do paid advertising as well, but starting off with using it as a free platform to show your portfolio of your work, give people a really good understanding of what your brand's about. You can connect with people. You can have that presence in people's lives. So the more that you're seen and your work is seen by people the more likely they are to buy into it especially if you have your brand really nice and clear and you've got beautiful photos representing all your pieces and taking advantage of doing reels and stories and all the video content that's really being pushed at the moment that can really go a long way and you don't have to pay anything to start off with and then once you really got a clear understanding of your target audience which pieces are selling you can then use that to scale in terms of Facebook ads as well, which is a fantastic way to scale as well to your first 1000. And in terms of social media, it doesn't start and stop with Instagram. There's Pinterest, there's Facebook, there's TikTok. There's so many out there nowadays. So once you're really happy with one, 
then you can move on to adding another one. Once you kind of got that content, you can then repurpose it and use it on the other ones, which goes a long way in terms of you, you've already done the work. So you may as well then implement that on a different platform as well. But obviously making sure that you have enough time to manage the different platforms or outsourcing that task to somebody else who can then take care of that account for you. And point number four is having a really good pricing strategy. Obviously we touched on this with the previous videos, but especially when you're scaling and you're doing more wholesale orders or you're doing Facebook ads, running anything that costs money in terms of the marketing, you really need to make sure that you're covering your costs and you're having enough to reinvest in it. And also in terms of your pricing, it's really important to base this on your understanding of your target audience because you don't want to have high-end clients and then you're selling really low-end items or jewelry so make sure that it's in line with them and what they expect from you so try not to chop and change from really expensive pieces to really low price point pieces so just make sure that you have a good understanding of the value you're adding with in those pieces so in terms of your pricing it's also kind of largely a mindset thing and Having that really good understanding of your target audience will help you to align your prices with them. You don't need to be the cheapest of cheap out there. I know when we're selling on Etsy, then we can be inclined to want to undercharge things and give things away basically for next to nothing. But then that customer is gonna have a certain opinion of what that what to expect with that piece they might even be skeptical and think oh why is it so cheap maybe it's actually not handmade or maybe it's not actually made from sterling silver maybe it's a scam so if you're pricing things correctly and you're actually making the customer feel like they're buying a really valuable item obviously you know totally different scale points whether you're doing high-end diamonds and gold your prices are going to be really really high compared to if you're working in silver and semi-precious stones. But just consider that and consider if you were to buy the piece, how you would you know, understand the brand and what you'd feel about that. So take that into consideration as well in terms of that and your scaling with that, with those correct prices. Also, if you're undercharging and you're not, you're not putting enough in there to scale, then you're gonna already shoot yourself in the foot to reach those thousand sales. It's gonna be really, really tricky because you won't have enough to reinvest back into the business. So rule of thirds again, like I mentioned in the previous video, one third is the cost, one third is marketing, and one third is your profit. So roughly have a look at that, but take that into consideration as well. Point number five is having a cohesive collection, having cohesive ranges. This goes a long way in terms of selling on your website as well as in shops, because when somebody is looking at the brand and they feel like the pieces go really well together, then it just is a much better representation of the brand and they really have a better feeling of what to expect from you and then they wanna come back for more as well. And within that collection, they, you wanna have higher priced pieces, which are like your statement hero pieces that catch people's eyes, but may not be that accessible to everybody. And then you wanna have your mid price point pieces, which are a little bit more tangible, maybe linked to the more expensive pieces, but just slightly lower price point. And then you wanna have your nice entry level items, which are the ones that are really nice as gifts for different people, or you know, maybe you just wanna try, you're not sure about the brand, and you, you, know, you just wanna have a first little dip your toe into the brand and see what the experience is like. Maybe have a really great time, and then you come back for more. So having those different price points in your collection is really, really valuable. And in fact, I have a whole other video on that that you can watch talking in more detail about those collections. So check that out if you're interested. Obviously, all of that is to do with if you work under a business model of creating collections, but maybe you work with one-off pieces or you do custom, custom work, then when you're starting, I understand having a lower price point so that people can you know, get to know you, they can like you and trust you. But then as you get more experienced, you're going to want to be charging a little bit more for your time. And that's totally normal and acceptable to raise your prices, especially in this day and age where things are going up. People are happy to spend more if they're getting good quality work back. And if they experience that they are, then that is totally acceptable for you to do that. So don't feel bad doing that. And what you want to do then is to build that because if for example you're doing you inundated with loads of different pieces you're feeling super rushed and under pressure because you have like 15 different commissions that you're working on 
and they're all rushing to you because it's really, really cheap. One, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get resentful for the fact that you're not actually making enough time, you don't have any time for yourself, you're not able to do a good job on each one, you're gonna feel rushed and under pressure, so then you might not be doing a good job and then people will come back to you, oh, the stone fell out or whatever it is because you rushed and you weren't paying attention and that isn't really gonna build a good business. So make sure that you do increase your prices as you go so that people are getting a good quality product as well as a good experience with working with you. For example, you could be doing 10 pieces at 100 each or you could be doing 5 pieces for 200 each. You'll still end up with the same money and you'll have a lot more time, you'll feel a lot more relaxed and people will be super happy with the quality of work because you've had more time to put into each of the pieces. Yes, some people might be put off by higher prices and they might not come back, but other people will be willing to work with you for higher prices because there are people for all different price points and as long as the work that you're giving them is of good quality and you're a pleasure to work with, then people will come back and still recommend you. And that way you'll be spending less time on making for less money and have more time to spend growing your business and scaling your business. Because in this video, we're talking about scaling to 1000 and things that you'll need to implement in order to do that. So doing lots for less isn't really gonna enable you to get there faster. And point number six is to optimize your website for sales. It's really important to step outside of your website and have a look from an external perspective, especially helpful to ask somebody else to navigate through your website without interrupting them or directing them. See, watch where they go, look how easy it is for them to use it because you really want it to be super intuitive. I've seen a lot of websites where it's just super confusing, overwhelming, I can't find what I'm looking for, I'm super confused and I just leave because I find the whole process quite stressful. And even sometimes there isn't even a buy button and I'm like, oh, it's really nice, but I wanna buy it, but I can't see where and it's just really conf confusing and then I can't go back and it's just a total nightmare. And that totally puts me off. Even if I like the pieces, I'm gonna be put off doing that. So make sure that you do optimize that in terms of making it super user-friendly for anybody with any techno level. So you might understand it, but think, would my granny understand it? That's kind of how I like to think about it. So someone with super basic skills, can they navigate successfully through it and do they understand what I want them to understand and take away what I want them to take away from my website? with ease and without me having to guide them. So think about that. Also, it's a great place to incorporate your colors, obviously, from your brand and to tell your story, share your values, as well as have really good product descriptions. Make sure that people understand the brand and what they're buying into. Make it feel like something super special and this will go a long way in terms of that. And obviously SEO is another great way to really optimize your website in terms of being found. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. I go into a whole bunch of detail about that in the course, if you're interested in that, to make sure that your images are found, to make sure that your platform is found, so that you're getting more free eyes on your platform. And point number seven is offering exceptional customer service. Even at the stage, 10 years down the line, I still do all the emails myself, I respond to customers, and I know I should outsource this, but there's something about it, I just feel like really close to them, and I want to, you know, make sure it's in my voice, make sure that it's, you know, I always like to just really get to know people. Sometimes we have some backwards and forwards conversations and that way I feel like I can really build that connection with my customers and feel a little bit more, like welcome them to the brand a little bit more. So that is something that is really important in terms of someone who's on the fence about buying from you. Say they email you, then say you take a week to respond, then they might already have forgotten about you and not be interested. So making sure that you reply in a timely manner, making sure that you always, you know, you're you're, you're yourself, you're polite, you're kind, you're, you know, just be, just be responsive in terms of that because being professional goes a long way in terms of someone wondering if they want to buy from you or not. And again, on top of this, say they have a great experience with you, then they might tell their friends because word of mouth is also a great way to grow your brand. So point number eight is working with influencers. When you're starting out working with them, you can work with micro influencers, so smaller numbers, so they might be more responsive and maybe work in with an exchange or something. They don't necessarily expect you to pay large sums of money, but as the influencers get bigger and they have a wider audience, they are going to charge for that. That's their livelihood and that's totally understandable and we 
we need to accept that. That is kind of the exchange and they wouldn't be able to do it if they weren't you know, charging for their services. So as you grow, you can then work with bigger influencers as well. And that is a great way to leverage a whole huge big audience that shares the same target audience as you. So doing that research, making sure that it is in line with your brand. Otherwise you're just chucking your money down the drain because they are going to be preaching to people who aren't interested. So for example, my brand is all about Scandinavian minimalism. So I'm not going to go to the influencer who's all about Nike activewear because even though they might have loads of followers, it's not the right people. They're going to expect a lower price point. They just not my peeps. So having a good understanding of who your target audience is, like we said in the beginning, goes a long, long way in terms of working with influencers further down the line to scale that business. And point number nine is attending trade shows. This is definitely something not to be taken lightly and done too early on because they are very expensive, very time consuming, and you really need to be organized, have everything nice and clear, and be really professional in terms of being approached by shops, boutiques, and galleries that come there. They're gonna expect you to have a level of understanding of your business, your markup points, your price points, your wholesale, like all kinds of stuff, your lookbook, a really, good, clear, solid brand that is really easy for you to articulate so that they are then sure, yes, I do want to work with you or no, I don't want to work with you. And having all of that stuff ready before you even go out there to the trade show so that when they say they're interested, you can then send it out to them straight away. It's really, really important to do that. But these are really great ways in terms of if you want to go down the wholesale route, then this is a really great option for you to investigate check out there's some in your area or maybe you might need to travel a little bit but it's really worth it if you're at that stage and you're ready to push to the next level and last but not least is point number 10 which is making sure that right from the beginning you have set up a business model to enable you to scale so right in the beginning of the consistent sales academy we speak about this and make sure that you have a clear understanding of the type of business you want to be running where you see yourself how you see yourself working to ensure that you're setting things things up slowly as you go. So when you get to this point of scaling to your 1000, everything is set up, everything is in order, your systems are smooth, everything is easy and a lot of things have been automated so that you're not running around like a headless chicken, feeling super stressed and not able to fulfill the orders that might be coming in. For example, a couple of years back, my boyfriend and I had another business selling plant related items and we grew really, really fast. And it was kind of a bit crazy because you know, we were spending like thousands on ads per day and we were getting loads and loads of orders, but we didn't have all the systems set up properly. So it was really stressful for us. We had to hire people to get on board in terms of helping us facilitate all of this. It was really, really stressful. So I definitely think scaling a bit slower and organically is better in terms of making sure that you have you know, understood any issues with the website, made sure that your whole customer journey is really nice and smooth and having things really, you know, set up, especially shipping, like all those things, your packaging, you wanna have that stuff all super smooth, super easy. So make sure that you do have a really clear understanding of those foundations from the get go. So if you're still on your way to making your first 1000 sales, then the Consistent Sales Academy has your back. Whether you've been making for five years, two years, five months, or 10 years, I have students who have, who've been making for all different numbers of years. If you're still on your way to making those thousand sales, then I genuinely believe that the course is so packed full of literally everything. I have poured my heart and soul into that and it's super tangible step-by-step -step things to help you implement real change within your business. Not only in the course do the students get access to cheat sheets, done for you emails, loads of resources. What the students actually find the most helpful is having an opportunity to ask all of their questions in the bi-monthly group calls. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a link down below, you can check that out. And now for the part you've all been waiting for is the winner of the free giveaway for the one-to-one -one session with me. Congratulations to Elizabeth Smith. Please send me an email and get in touch and let's organize a time that best suits you to connect and have a chat. Looking forward to it and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next week in another one. Take care. Bye.